Welcome to another episode of Ask the Lawyer. This time we're asking about a medical device that seems to be doing more harm than good. It's called a hernia mesh. Hi, I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com. Here to answer our questions is attorney Merida Coxwell with Coxwell & Associates in Jackson, Mississippi. Merida, thank you for making some time to answer our questions today. Uh, you're welcome. I appreciate it. Let's talk. Let's start with a little definition. What is hernia mesh? We've heard about it. Maybe you've uh, seen it in the news. Tell us what it is. Well, the hernia mesh that is in use nowadays is a polypropylene substance, uh, you know, which is a chemical substance. It's a sheet that is uh, installed in either a ventral, femoral, or in the groin area of a patient who has a hernia. Uh, before they were polypropylene, they were substances like uh, polyester. Uh, there was a substance called Marlex. Um, so right now, almost all hernia mesh implant products are made out of polypropylene. So where's the complication? Where's the problem? Is it with the older versions of the hernia mesh? Well, you understand there's always two sides to every lawsuit. Right. We and many lawyers in the nation are contending that some of the products that are made are defective. Uh, there are a number of causes of action, and I won't try to list every one of them now. I think that would take up far much, too much time, mm -hmm. but it's a failure to warn. It is a product who, that we contend uh, causes fist, fistulas, seromas, constant infections. It's a product that the body immediately begins to fight. Uh, there are just a host of complications. There are about five or six manufacturers of these uh, hernia mesh implant products. And with each of those manufacturers, it's not every product that is causing a problem, but there are a number of products. Some of them have to do with the shape when they're slid up into the gro groin area. Uh, it's really difficult and a little bit complex, probably beyond the scope of our talk to try to list every single product that has a problem and what that problem is. But there, there are some substantial problems. And I'm involved in the Bard Duvall uh, multi-district litigation that is pending. There is also a Bard Duvall state court action pending. And there are actions pending against other manufacturers of hernia mesh besides the Bard Duvall. So if someone, uh, well, you would assume somebody would know they've got a hernia mesh implant if they've been having complications. What's your advice to them? Let's, let's go through the process of what you, what you recommend they sure. do. Sure. Well, we always require someone to fill out an intake form and to provide us medical releases because you could have a hernia mesh implant and the implant or one of the things that we contend is wrong with the implant might not be causing your problem. So we're required to get a medical release, an intake form. We'll do an extensive interview of the potential client, and then we will have our own medical review team look at that before we decide whether or not we should file that case. And there are cases that we look at and we reject because there we do not believe that the implant is the cause of this particular person's uh, injury. Mm -hmm. So it's not a situation where just because you have a hernia mesh implant, yes, you have a right to a lawsuit. You still have to go through a very rigorous uh, review process and a very rigorous detailed review of your medical records. But I would assume it's not the kind of thing that you could expect any average person to know whether they do qualify or not. So it'd be the kind of thing to reach out to someone like yourself to let you guys help walk them through that process. That, that's correct. And, and there are some people that get the implant and it doesn't take very long for them to know something is wrong with my body. Uh, the mesh might adhere to their internal organs. The mesh might curl up. It might curl at pieces. It might separate. It'll start calling, causing bowel obstruction. Uh, there are some injuries that are so severe and so painful that the individuals know it pretty quick. There are others that that might be the cause of an infection where after they have the implant put in and the implant seems to be going well 
it's clear they don't have an infection due to the operation, and suddenly they start getting infection after infection after infection, 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 then it becomes clear to us that that's a case worth reviewing because there's something in that mesh that's causing this human being to have infection after infection. Uh, in this uh, litigation, uh, uh, Merida, is, is, is your contention that the companies that provided the mesh uh, knew that there were complications but still kept uh, uh, selling it to doctors and that sort of thing? Oh, well, yes. I mean, it, that's putting it a little bit oversimplified, and it's one of those cases. It's not like um, a car wreck where you can say, he hit me from behind, therefore he was at fault. The, the lawsuits, I mean, I think our master complaint is probably, I'm guessing right now, maybe 40 pages detailing the history of the mesh, the what we call buckets. I mean, we're I'm in the bar of all, so we have these broken down into buckets. There are some of these meshes that have coatings on them, and we contend that those coatings are causing infections. There's some of the meshes based on the shape. So it really depends on what the mesh is, who the manufacturer is, and whether it's a coated mesh, an uncoated mesh, whether it's the shape of the mesh. mesh. It's uh, probably one of the most complex litigations that uh, I have been in in the last two decades. Where would you guess, if you had to make an educated guess, where are we in the process? Is it still very early? Uh, where- well... Uh, yes, I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, we are and we aren't. I'm involved in two MDLs now where the judges are moving the MDLs extremely fast. Uh, this particular MDL, I believe we have our first trial going in May of this year. I believe, and I'm going off memory, I believe we have our second one in either June or July, and then I believe one in August or September. Uh, That's moving very fast. Mm -hmm. The uh, 3M combat earplug uh, MDL that we're involved in is also moving extremely fast. When you consider I have been involved in MDLs that went on for eight, there's an MDL right now going on that I believe it's about 10 years old. It's taking that long to handle all of the cases. Is, but it's not too late for someone who thinks they may qualify for this to contact you and, and find out? It's There's still time? No, as long as we can, you know, look at their implant and get their medical records and go through a rather rigorous process of determining whether or not we feel we can prove the mesh is the cause of their problems, it's not too late. What if someone uh, had complications and had the mesh removed I would imagine sometimes there could be complications from the surgery to remove and replace. Uh, if they've had the mesh removed, uh, can they still be involved in the case, Meredith? Yes, and there there are even people who, it's not very many people, but there are some folks that have the mesh that uh, it may be medically impossible to remove it. Mm. And those people could have a case. It really all boils down to, you know, us getting the files and going through the medical review process. Great. Anything else you'd like to add uh, about this? The whole it's a it's a very complicated uh, situation. It sounds it, like it it is. It's a tough topic to try to cover in a ten or fifteen minute segment sure. and make sense. Give us a, a guess of what sort of numbers you're talking about when you're talking about this many different products and then this many different patients. Can you guess how many people you might think have been affected by this? No, I couldn't. I know those statistics are out there. Uh, I haven't paid much attention to them. I've been working on the ones that we are currently representing, and I just haven't had my eyes on the whole universe. We've got our hands full with the cases, not only doing the MDL work on the committees, but also doing the individual work. All right. Well, thank you so much. I think you lots of helpful information today, Merida. I do appreciate you taking some time to answer our questions. You're welcome. Thank you very much. That's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been Attorney Merida Coxwell of Jackson, Mississippi. If you want the best information about hernia mesh or you're ready to choose a lawyer that lawyers choose, make sure to go to askthelawyers.com first. Also, please take a second to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Thanks for watching. I'm Rob Rosenthal with askthelawyers.com. All right, buddy. Good job. Now,